And now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. And let us listen for God's still speaking voice in this morning's prelude. Please join me in the call to worship. In the best and worst of times, we hear the call of faith to join in worship. From deep within, we sense the need to offer praise and offer up our praise. Despite the circumstances we face, God desires to provide the very best for all of Earth's children. So we come to speak with our hearts, where we find God's provisions in abundance, satisfying the true hungers of our hearts. Please join us in our first hymn, The God of Abraham Praise, number 24 in the Black Hymnal.
we'd like to invite you to greet one another with the signs of peace this morning. If you are at home, you can send someone a note. If you are here in worship, please greet an, one another as you are led. And if you'd rather people not approach you, simply hold up a traditional peace sign to let them know. Peace be with you. As people return to their seats, I'd again like to invite anyone worshiping from home to send a simple note to a loved one or someone with whom you haven't spoken for a while. Something simple like God is with you. And we invite you to join in the order of service, whether you are at home or here in person. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Please join us in our unison gathering prayer. Gracious God, we gather this morning in this house of worship, which, thanks to your love, is our home away from home. We come to add our human voices to the chorus of praise raised by your creation. We come as we are, distracted and weary, hopeful and open, Know that you accept us as we're ever mindful of our cares and joys. Still in us now, the many voices that clamor for attention that we might center ourselves upon you. Speak to us in word and melody and quiet that we may be renewed in our faith and strengthened in your service. Amen. We invite you now to join us in moments of confession and silence. Forgiving God, we acknowledge that repentance opens the door to forgiveness and transformation. We turn from our desire for comfort over compassion, easy solutions over challenging resolution and avoidance over confrontation. And in silence, we confess to you now. Oh God, we need your strength, your fortitude, and your conviction to overcome our fear of loss, to make room for the gains of new life for ourselves and our neighbors through our generous and sacrificial living. In Jesus' name, amen. God is faithful to forgive and to redeem. 
God will sustain us through the hard work of confronting the truth about ourselves, our communities, and our world. Receive the companionship of the Holy Spirit who leads and guides us in all truth. Thanks be to God. I invite Jennifer Byam now to come forward for the children's message this morning. Thank you. Lola, you want to come? <laughs> Here. Let's have a seat. Near the door. So tomorrow is a little bit of a holiday. Did you know that? Yes? Awesome. It is um, called Labor Day. And labor means that you're working, that you have lots of things to do and that you work, right? So we, a long time ago in America, people got together and decided they would have a um, holiday for the people that labored, the people that worked, right? And so they called it Labor Day. And on that day, people, many people do not have work. Do you have school? No, no. So a day off from work and school, yes. So that is tomorrow. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. Now, God does say that work is good. I have a verse from the Bible here. In Colossians, God says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not man. So God does say that work is good. But also, God says that rest is good. So having a day off from school, from work, is a good thing too. Did you know that God rested as well? Yes? Oh, awesome. Because after God created the world, God rested. And in Genesis it says, by the seventh day, God had finished the work and so rested from the work. So God said, that it's good that we go to school and that we have work, but it's also very important to rest. And we should remember that this week. Okay? What? Um, what are some of the things that keep you that keep you busy? What do you do? You stay home. Do you go to school? Does that keep you busy though? Does school keep you busy? Yes. Do you have any? Do you go to dance or any sports or anything? Dance starts up, so dance is going to keep you busy. Yes, yes. Awesome. Awesome. I, in my bag, I have some pictures of things that keep me busy. You want to put your hand in and pull one out? Ah! Exercise. I try. Try to go. <laughs> awesome. Okay, there's a few more in there. What else do you see? Oh, can you hold it up? Oh, shopping, groceries, and other things, right, Lorelai? Mm hmm And what else? Oh, school. 
so I teach during the week, so I'm busy at my school too, just like you're busy at your school. Oh, and appointments, right? Doctors for hair and things like that, meeting friends. Yeah. Oh, and busy with Sunday school. Yes. <laughs> I think that's it for that one, Marla. But can you help me? We have to put some of, I'm going to put them over here. Now, um, that, so those are lots of things that we do for work. But God says that we don't have, it doesn't matter how much work you do, if you do more than someone else, God loves everyone the same, right? So it doesn't matter that you have to, that you have um, lots to do. The more you do doesn't make it God loves you more. So what do you like to do to relax, to take a break from all your work? Stay home, Stay home yes. Do you like to play? with all your favorite toys and things, and see your friends. Yes? So in my bag here, now I have things that I like to do to relax. So let's pull those out, and let's see what you have. Oh, it's a book. Do you want to hold it to everyone? Like to read? Yes? What else is in there? Oh, show them, yes. Listening to music. That's always fun. And the last one. Oh, seeing friends. And there's one more, I think. Yeah, show everybody. And watching TV. Those are some things that we can do to relax. So this week, Lola, well, remember that even if you're busy, it's good to take time to relax, right? Okay, and let's pray before we go. All right, can you, can you repeat after me? Okay. Dear God, thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for the stories in the Bible. Help us to remember to rest. Help us to be aware of your presence. And thank you for your love. Amen. Thank you. Have a good week. Thank you. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, who led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Therefore the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush, he looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush has not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Then God said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. 
And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who were in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the county of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasitites, the Hivitites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship the God on the mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of the ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord God, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The Gospel letter this morning is from Matthew, chapter 16, verses 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chiefs, priests, and scribes, and be killed on the third day, be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebu rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned away and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You were a stumbling block to me, for you were setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their lives will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forget their life? or forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Here end the readings from our tradition. Let us feel God's extraordinary love in this ordinary time of prayer and of our church year. O Holy Spirit, we pray you move between words and hearing. Amen. Oh. 
holy ground. When Moses found himself and his flock of sheep on a wilderness mountain, he was told to take off his sandals, that the ground on which he stood was sacred. And the very voice saying that was coming from a bush, a bush that was burning and burning and not burning completely up. Talk about shock and awe. Now at first, Moses thinks that the voice is an angel. So he walks toward it to get a better look at this amazement. But then the voice stops him. Come no closer. You're on holy ground. And it turns out that the voice is none other than God himself. This is a major turning point in the life of Moses. Moses, whose larger-than-life story was turned into a cinematic event, is the hero of the book of Exodus. Last week, we heard about his birth at a time when the king of Egypt had ordered all male Hebrew babies killed. So in order to save his life, his mother, sister, the midwife, Shifra, and Pua, and an Egyptian princess devise an amazing and subversive plan to save his life. Then Moses grows into manhood with his feet planted in two worlds, his princely Egyptian upbringing and his Hebrew heritage. And of course, those two worlds collide. One day Moses sees an Egyptian beating up a Hebrew slave and he kills the Egyptian and hides his body. However, word of this gets back to Pharaoh and now Moses has a price on his head. He escapes to the hill country and in typical biblical motif style meets his future wife at a well. All is going so well for Moses now, until this encounter with a bush that will not be consumed by fire. And the rest of the story, which is long, spans all of Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. But in this moment is a critical juncture in his life. God just told him to go to Pharaoh, who wants him dead, by the way, and demand that he let the Hebrew people go. So much for pastoral sheep tending. Now he must tend to his people, and we know how contentious they can be. And even after their liberation from slavery in Egypt, the people moaned and complained the whole of the 40 years of wilderness wandering. And even though it took lots of prodding on God's part, Moses was transformed in that holy ground encounter. Now, fast forward to Israel in the time of Jesus, who is at a major turning point also. Matthew says, from that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem. This is the very denouement of the gospel. Because up until this very moment, Jesus has been about the work of preaching and teaching and healing. And as we know, this has angered the religious authorities. From that time on, that time that Matthew is referring to was Jesus' visit to Caesarea Philippi. Now that needs a little bit of unpacking, because as the name Caesarea Philippi implies, this is a district that embraces both the occupation by Rome and Caesar and their Hebrew collaborators, Philip, the infamous son of Herod the Great. 
there is no better illustration of the situation in israel than this marriage of rome with israel's elite and from that place of unholy partnership jesus makes his pivot to jerusalem and ultimately to his death on a roman cross but on the journey to jerusalem he will continue to preach and teach and heal friends we are in such a transition time our pastor has moved on leaving us in a liminal space liminal is latin for threshold so we are on the doorstep of a transition to something new something that has not yet occurred or even shown us what it will be but if we take our cue from Moses and Jesus, who both found themselves in that liminal space, we can discern a plan for us in how to be in this time of uncertainty. Moses, when called, claimed that he shouldn't be the one. After all, he stuttered. To which God replied that his brother Aaron would go with him and be his voice if needed. Then Moses said, well, I lack the power to go up against the powerful Pharaoh. So God gave him a staff that worked miracles. Finally, armed with a voice and a miracle working staff, Moses agrees. Now the rest of the story is long and involves multiple plagues of frogs and locusts and blood in a river and a parting of the Red Sea and the Egyptian army being swallowed and then wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. And finally, finally Moses, who is old, old, sees the promised land from yet another mountaintop and dies. But throughout his long life, Moses kept on going. No matter what difficulty lay before him. So from Moses, we can learn to persevere, no matter what the circumstance. And Jesus, even when he knew what would happen to him in Jerusalem, he continued on his ministry. Now, I remember back when Judith Gooch was our pastor. She had a line that appeared in each week in the bulletin that said something like, and I can't remember it exactly, but pastor, the Reverend Judith Gooch, ministers the congregation. And here, in this liminal space, we must live out that calling to be ministers to carry on the work of this congregation, even in a time without pastoral leadership. We do not know when we will have an interim minister. And as our council chair, Carol, tells us, it could take months to find one. In the meantime, it's incumbent on all of us to continue the ministries of this place. We do so much. These are our ministries, and this is our work. Our feeding ministries, feeding our children together, our little free food pantry, meals for many, our hope fund that provides for those most in need in our community, and our worship committee's guidance of all of our services, especially important in these times without pastoral leadership. Our faith formation ministries and our children's programs, our music ministries and our choir and all of the special musical events, our outreach to the elderly and the students, our mission and social outreach ministries helping both locally and globally our building and grounds ministries that tend to the needs of our physical building, our hospitality ministry, 
Sunday nighters, the book group, the knitting group, and our educational ministries and Bible study. Now, I'm probably missing something really important, but I think you get the idea. Keeping all of these ministries going is our task as ministers of this congregation. Yes, dear ones, we have work to do. So let the words of the Apostle Paul be our guide in the times ahead. Paul tells us to let love be genuine, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, persevere in prayer. I end this morning with Pastor Holland's final words to us. They said, remember that love must be proclaimed. Tend the sick. Share a meal. If anyone asks you where you have come from, say to them that you are God's child and that you have seen love in Christ. We're in this together, and we're on holy ground. Amen. Our hymn is, When Israel Was in Egypt's Land, number 572 in your black hymnal.
We have a slight change in the bulletin this morning. Rather than um, having you come forward and we'll pass around the plate, we're going to do intinction this morning. So we will ask you to come forward down the center aisle, take a piece of bread and dip it in the cup, and then go back to your seat around that way. Let us come to the table of communion, not because we must, but because we may. Let us sit together in humility and thanksgiving rather than in pride or possessiveness. Let us confess not that we are righteous, but that we love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to remember him. Let us come not that we are strong, but that we are needy. Not that we have any claim on Christ, but that he invites us to receive his grace and experience his presence. So let us worthily partake that he may be known to us in the breaking of bread. And let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for calling us into existence by your word, for speaking your words of demand and grace through teachers and prophets, and for promising that your word shall be written on our hearts. We marvel with gratitude that your word became flesh and lived among us in Jesus, that he suffered as we suffer to be with us and die for us, and that you raised him from the dead in victory over death and sin holding the glad word of your good news in our minds. May your spirit transform this bread and cup into signs of Christ's living presence and engrave upon our hearts the life-transforming image of Christ. With all companions of Christ, in this way, in every time and place, we praise your holy name. Amen. We come to this table to remember that on that night so very long ago when Jesus was at supper with his closest friends in that upper room, a night of betrayal and desertion, that Jesus at supper took a loaf of bread and he gave thanks for it. And then he broke it and he said to them, this is my body which is given for you as often as you eat this bread. Do it and remember me. And when the meal was over, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks for it. And he says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Ministering to you now in his name, we bring you this bread and this cup. Come now, the table is set. The bread of life for you, baby. Bread of life for you, Jane. The bread of life for you, Jane. The bread of life for you, Allison. The bread of life for you, Donna. The bread of life for you, Butch. bread of life for you, Arlene. Amen. The bread of life for you, Kathy. The bread of life for you, Hannah.
the bread of life, you love me. of life, the cup of redemption. In thanksgiving for this meal, let's pray together. Almighty and loving God, we marvel, we marvel at, the, at privilege the privilege of, of eating, eating at Christ's, Christ's table. Made, made one with Christ, Christ in, in the, the fellowship of this meal, meal we, we know ourselves to be at one with you. people everywhere. Help us to express Christ's hospitality toward all we meet. Amen. Jesus posed the question for what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? When we consider the gifts that we give and receive, we remember that Creator is also Source. So let us give generously of the abundance of our lives so that the world may be made better and God's kingdom may come near. If you are at home and want to learn more about giving to, go to uccplymouth.org forward slash give to find out how to contribute online. And finally, if you are in worship this morning, we want to make sure that you know there are lots of ways to give. If you are at home and plan to send a check, just be sure that you send it to Post Office Box 86 and not our physical address. And please feel free to simply extend your hand as the plate passes and do so thinking of a way that you can give love in the world this week. We invite you to join us this morning as we give. Mm
Please join me in the offertory prayer. We will not proclaim our faith with our words only, but with our lives and these gifts which we offer to you, O God. We pray that others might be transformed by your grace, your hope, and your peace. Amen. This is the time in our service when we lift up any joys or concerns that we have. And I ask if there is anyone that wishes to raise a joy or concern this morning. Our friend Tony needed to have bypass surgery to get into his strength before he was able to uh, tackle cancer. He has done his bypass surgery. He has come through it very nicely, and he is now eating well, and he will be home, but he'll be starting another journey too. But he's gone past this one, which is wonderful news. God, in your grace and mercy. Yes, um, you'll see in the bulletin that Duncan McDougall is listed. He, um, He taught at PSU. He's somebody that I know. And he did take a fall, but um, he's been in a nursing home. And his wife has been there, too, because she fell and broke a hip. But now he's going to have heart surgery this week. So they both um, could use our prayers. God, in your grace and mercy. Alice, do you want to say, uh, give us an update on you? Oh, my sprained ankle is healing a bit. I'm going to start um, physical therapy this week, God willing. And uh, I hope to be off the walker and just be my normal self uh, by the end of the month. We hope so, too. Thank you. God, in your grace and mercy. Thank you. Prayers for Wayne, who overdid it on Thursday, but is recovering well. God, in your grace and mercy. I am asking for prayers for uh, my neighbor and friend, Judy Detzel. Um, She is the woman that did all our beautiful um, stained glass in the meditation room. Um, She is now on hospice. So prayers for her and Carl and the family. God, in your grace and mercy. Are there others this morning? This is certainly enough for us to keep in our heart. And I ask you to please take your bulletin home and pray for these people on our prayer list. Let us be in the spirit of prayer together. God of love, by your mercy we present our whole lives to you as a living sacrifice, seeking not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewal of our mindfulness so that we may discern what is your delight, what is good and life-giving and whole. Therefore, O God, let our love be genuine. May we turn from what is evil and hold fast to what is good. May we love one another with mutual affection and honor. May we not lag in zeal, but be ardent in spirit, serving you. By your grace, may we rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Help us by your spirit to contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. We bless those who persecute us. We bless and do not curse them. 
We rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We desire to live in harmony with one another. We seek not to be above others, but to associate with the lowly, not claiming to be wiser than we are. We will not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. By your grace, we will live peaceably with all. We take no part in vengeance. If our enemies are hungry, we will feed them. If they are thirsty, we will give them something to drink. We will not be overcome by evil, but by your grace, we shall overcome evil with good. This is our spiritual worship and our faith. For this life in Christ, we give you thanks, and we pray together as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant, which is number 539 in your black hymnal. The blessing of God, who created both darkness and light, be with you today, that your life may be illumined by divine wisdom. The blessing of God, who loves you and restores you to wholeness, be with you always, that you may love others in Christ's name. And the blessing of God, who sanctifies the breath of your living, inspire your words and actions, thoughts and feelings, that you may be the messenger of God's blessing in this world today and always.